Whistler basically has had a segment in every feature film every year that I can remember. And, and one big thing for us was that it wasn't gonna be the same old Whistler segment. Choosing to do more of like a POV, um, really on board with like the rider and the whole experience of Whistler with your buddies, um, going riding trails and you know, fun antics around the village and things that pop up over Whistler, they're pretty unique in itself. So just showing that is a fast cutting, really fun, exciting, real life experience in Whistler. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen IFHD on YouTube. Shit Canadians say, all that shit mountain bikers say, I'm faster than you. That's uh, a good friend of ours, Matt Dennison. We chose to use Dennison because we know he's, he's the right kind of person to direct this segment. I mean, I'm not the most outgoing person and, and some of the things we needed to do to get these shots were, were something that we needed direction with. I was super excited to come help with the crew. They asked me to come help with their Whistler segment. They needed some help directing the non-riding scenes, so I thought I could bring some of my directing skills that I've acquired through my YouTube channel and uh, bring some comedy into the segment, hopefully make some people laugh, and uh, also show a sick story. Shooting the intro, we have all these POV shots, and one of them was just me waking up with a beer box on my head, passed out in the bathtub. <laughs> That's John and Kurt bailing off the bed, it's so funny. A lot of stuff is like, he just cranks the hot water on it. He cranked it right onto hot, so I, I'm sitting there and I don't know when it's gonna happen because I got the box on my head and I can't see. And so it's a full good reaction because all of a sudden I'm just getting blasted <laughs> with water. And I actually tried to get up and I just slid out and freaking bailed. It was a pretty hilarious scene to, to work on for that. It was, it was good. The start of the segment starts off with the point of view of Dylan. Um, so we had to think of a way how can we transition from his point of view to a riding scene? Because we don't want all the riding scenes to be point of view. It's, it, it will, it'll get dull fast and we can't show exactly what we have. We need to show our dog and Ropo shredding with, our, with normal shots, not all POV. So what we came up with was we would simulate the POV, Dylan's POV, looking into his eyepiece of the camera. Let's let's try one more. Let, yeah, let's let's, let's try. No, you try doing the hand, and then I'll. Uh, I, I, I can move it. Okay. So ready? Three, two, one. That that is way easier for sure. Yeah, I think. <laughs> and we think it 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 turned out pretty well. It looks like it's Dylan's eyes looking into his camera. Giving groups to run for his money. Watch your back, groups. Oh yeah. That's a nug. Oh yeah. Oh, work the camera. Make love to me. Oh wait, well not me. Well, mostly the camera. Maybe me later. Oh yeah. Oh! <laughs> Speech jammer. Uh, Matt came up with this, uh, I don't know, we are just chilling in the room, kind of bored, and he brought out the speech jammer. The speech jammer is a system that echoes your own voice into your, into your ears with headphones at a slight delay and it completely messes up your thought processes and what you're trying to say. It makes you sound really funny. As soon as you start talking, you just like, you, you try to answer a question and all of a sudden you're just thinking so hard and speaking slowly. How he got tent blows my mind. Yes, Sorgi's win was legit, but everybody else was questionable. Definitely some entertainment going on there, just pure laughter. So we were lucky enough to go up Garbo a day before it opened. Um, all the trails are covered in leaves and just totally untouched. Snow has just melted off and, and we got uh, gifted with a, a pretty sick fog patch. We just came up here to eat sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And chips. Don't forget chips. Things were going great. Um, but there's a patch of snow, so uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up. The film is no more, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, it was a good run, but unfortunately this patch just really, you know, took, got the best of us, so. Maybe next year there'll be a new close to crew film, maybe they'll get better snow tires, I'm not sure, but for now, that's a wrap. Uh, I remember like, I'd see you guys, and then like, pretty soon I couldn't even see like 10 feet in front of me, it was just so gnarly, it was the craziest weather I've ever been in. Mitch's scrub on that upper stuff. It, that it was just ridiculous like straight dirt bike style like 
I don't know, maybe second, third gear pin. Just carving almost horizontal and then just little lift off, tap, boom, sideways and out, just hanging it. And I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but when you see it, it's pretty, pretty wild to see like how you can control a jump and just eat up something that most people would just go flying over. And, and Dogger slipped a few sick cans and yeah, it was just all, all around good sesh. Not even the most ideal jump, but he's just, oh, I don't know, like I do this, I do no foot cans maybe like 10 times a year, you know, I, if, if the time is right, I'll just do it. And he's just busting out the sickest ones, rigging the sickest shots with the fog and the chair lift and it's just, it was super sick. Okay, it's 1 a.m. We just finished the party scenes. Now we're doing the crash scene and the retrieval of the bike. <laughs> Earlier in the night, he stored a he stashed a demo in the woods. Uh, do people even do that? Well, people Pretty... want to keep their bikes. Yeah, I think people like keeping their bikes, especially when they're like six that six thousand dollars. Anyways, what you're all waiting for is the fake crash. All right. Cut to the fake crash. <laughs> all right. Action. Nice oh. crash! Oh. Very consistent with this morning. The best way to show the style and, and have it be powerful, I feel like, is to to spend the time with your friends doing what, what you normally do. That's when the most ridiculous moments happen and the funnest things on the trail happen. So basically just went out and did what we'd normally do and and but filmed it, you know? It's it's sweet. We so many so many friends and, and connections up here and they, they all been supporting us and, and helping us out. And, Pretty sweet just to go out and try and make everyone laugh. Our dog's gonna drop in in a sec. Dave, drop it in. 